Hey Bruno, my name is David Ballou and I'm going to make a quick tutorial on how to use your Ricoh Theta V. Okay, here's mine right here. Okay, along the sides you'll see three buttons here. The first one is your power on button. The second one is uh, for Wi-Fi. And the third one is for uh, the mode where you will push that button to change between uh, taking pictures or video, okay? And on the bottom here, right along here, you will see these uh, numbers right here. Mine says YL and then two zeros and then another string of numbers. All the numbers are your password when you connect this to Wi-Fi, okay? So taking this video on one of my iPhones and I have a whole another iPhone. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to my settings. Now I'm using an iPhone and I know that you have a uh, Galaxy S, I think you said in the forums. Okay, but I'm gonna go to my Wi-Fi. Okay, right now it's open, but this is not on. So what I'm going to do to turn it on is I'm going to press and hold this top button and you will see the little blue light come on. Okay. Now notice you can't see anything here on the front, right? Or on the back. But then all of a sudden it powered up and came on. All right, now see my Wi-Fi is blinking. Uh, I think that's because I had it set on Wi-Fi last. If I press the Wi-Fi wi button, the Wi-Fi shuts off. Okay? So there's no need to have it in Wi-Fi mode if you're not going to be using your phone to monitor what you're recording. There's just no sense to have it on. All it does is use battery. So in this case, let's say I'm going to be monitoring with the app, the Theta app, uh, with my phone. So I press the Wi-Fi button, which is the middle button. It has the little Wi-Fi symbol there. I press and hold. It puts it in Wi-Fi mode, and it is blinking. Now, sometimes you have only a certain amount of time to be able to get this all coordinated. Okay. And I'm waiting for it. It comes up and says Theta, and then my product number. Okay, now I've already put my password in once before, but I'm gonna forget this network so that I can show you how to put the password in. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to choose the Theta, and it's gonna ask me for the password. And now we're gonna go back and we're gonna put in all the numbers. Forget the first two letters, zero, zero, one zero five nine four nine and then I'm going to join <clears throat> and it says incorrect password this is one of the things that irritates me greatly okay I'm going to try again We only have a certain amount of time to do this. Password 00105949. Join. Incorrect password. So let's go back here. <clears throat> All right. See, it's, it's not even blinking anymore. Let's go back. Blinky, blinky. Theta. Zero, zero, one, zero, five, nine, four, nine. Now it has connected. All right? So don't give up. You'll make it work. Because I didn't do anything different. 
This is one of the problems that I have with the Theta. That's why I only give it two of five stars. Now, once you get this thing working, it does a pretty good job. Okay, so now I'm connected, all right? And now I'm in my different modes, all right? First of all, let's just look here. See the difference? I'm pushing the mode button and it's going from a video camera to a camera. That's how I'm choosing between the two. Now I'm gonna put it in camera mode. I've got it facing me, because this is forward. This is actually the back. I'm gonna take a picture by pressing. I took a picture. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to mode and I'm gonna to go to video. Okay, and I'm gonna press the button. And now I've got a blinking red light. That means I'm recording video. Okay. All right. And now I've quit recording video. Now here's a little thing that I like to do. Okay. <clears throat> now you can get you a tripod, but if you're at the World Cup, I can't imagine you're gonna be able allowed to have a tripod uh, there at your seat. But what you can get you is one of these little things. Okay, I'm shortening it up so that you can see what it looks like. This is a monopod. Okay, you just take this. Tighten it right up. Look at that. Is that nice and sweet? And you can lower these to whatever height you want, whether you're standing or sitting in the seats. Who sits at the World Cup anyways, right? And then it's sitting there. Okay. Then you can hold it like this, even if you're just carrying it around. Okay. You just carry it around like this. Taking my video. Taking my video like this. Or you could extend it, hold it way up, get you a nice picture or something like that. Okay. So for right now, I'm just going to hold this like this. All right, and I'm gonna show you here now, if I'm still connected, which I am still connected to the Wi-Fi. And to answer your question, when you connect this to Wi-Fi, you are not able to connect to an outside Wi-Fi source to provide yourself with internet, okay? And there's really no need to because unfortunately, you cannot stream with this over a phone through the app okay this is just for monitoring what this sees so that you can record from your phone okay so I would then go to the theta app okay and then this is what <clears throat> my phone sees all right Okay, so that's what my phone sees. Now, one of the things you'll want to do, because this thing will time out if you are not recording or anything, it will time out after a moment. So what you want to do is come over here to settings. And um, let's see, first of all, let's go to this. In the app, I'm going to set this down for a moment. In the app, these are some pictures and stuff that I've taken. Over here in settings, these are your primary settings that are not related to phone or video so much. As it is, my connection is Wi-Fi. I can change my password if I want to. Or I can go to the uh, camera settings and sleep mode. I can change this sleep mode to when it wants to shut off. By default, I think it's three minutes, okay? Three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, or off, okay? Now with off, don't forget this thing's on, you'll run your battery down. So having it able to shut off after a period of time is a good thing. But every time it shuts off, you gotta go back through that Wi-Fi connection process, okay? Now, if you've set it up once before and you put the password in, you should be able to 
once you go to your settings back here again and go to Wi-Fi, it'll pick it up and then you can click it and it'll automatically join, okay? So let's go back to the Theta settings. I put mine on 10 minutes because um, I like to have it just sit there and wait for a little bit while I'm monitoring and then because uh, nothing happens automatically when you're expecting it to. So you want this thing ready to go. Okay, uh, camera shutter volume, you can choose that on whatever you want. Now the transfer method, this means when you have a file that you've recorded on your Theta, when you go to transfer it, what is the transfer method that you want? Okay, now you can copy it, which means that it will stay on your Theta as well as send it to your phone, okay? Now you can move it also, all right? I am a mover because if I can get it to my phone, that's where I want it. And then when you move it, it automatically deletes it off of here and frees up some of your storage on the camera. So you don't have to go through single file by file and delete it and delete it and delete it. Especially if you're at the World Cup, you want this to happen as fast as possible. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna go back on camera settings, uh, share settings. You have to go through in the app and go ahead and connect to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever accounts you've got that you wanna share it to, you wanna get it set up in there. That way, once you get it on, uh, well, and if you are a person that isn't going to copy it to your phone and you're not gonna move it to your phone, it's only on the device, excuse me, on the device, through the app, you can share it directly from here to these uh, social platforms. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna take it straight from here and through Wi-Fi, send it and push it out to your social platforms. Now that is slow, okay? So I'm a mover, I get it to my device, and then I can edit the little clip as much as I want to in case I've got a whole bunch of extra information. Hey, there's James, hey, Hello. say what's up. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so, <clears throat> That's why I move it. One, I free up storage and then it's on my phone and I can edit that file uh, a little bit later and then I can push it out to my social platforms without all the extra stuff of it moving around while you got it set up. You can edit your clip, make it look pro, okay? Uh, and that's pretty much it right there. Uh, if you have a new phone, chances are your Wi-Fi bandwidth should be changed to five gigahertz. That allows you the higher bandwidth to transfer those files over, okay? If you put it on 2.4, uh, it is going to still work, but it's going to be slower. Okay, uh, wireless LAN clan, uh, clamp mode. Uh, uh, you're not gonna be using this. This is for a whole nother tutorial, which I have not even used. Um, Okay, and update firmware. Uh, probably one of the first things you wanna do is get this thing attached to a laptop and get the firmware updated to the latest and greatest. Uh, I don't even think I'm on the latest one yet. They, hey, they have too many. Okay, now let's go to the actual camera itself. All right, so here I am right now. I'm in video mode. Okay, and then there's camera mode. Now, you have a settings for each mode right up here. So right now in camera, I can go to this, settings, shooting method. Uh, you have several different types of it, but normal shooting is point and click. Point and click. Okay, uh, display after shooting. You can choose that right there so that it'll show you a quick image of it that you can peruse and look around and stuff like that, uh, but that takes time. Then you have to close it. 
if you're wanting to take several pictures at a time, you want to just turn that off. Uh, your image size is fixed. You can't change that. Uh, and then here's your number possible of shots uh, using the camera mode. 4,449 for me with a battery level. Okay. Now, uh, depending on whether you take some video or not, obviously that would change because you're taking up the storage. Okay. Then I'm going to go to video mode. Now, right now, it shows that I have five minutes remaining. I'm using the shooting size of full HD and I have a full battery and I have my um, auto exposure and white balance set to auto, but you can change that. Let's go to settings uh, on the codec. It's fixed. Microphone gain, microphone gain. Mine is set to normal, which would be like me talking to you right now and you can hear me, but for some reason, if you were in a low sound environment, you could change that, or excuse me, if you were in a high sound environment, you could change that to low, and you might get less distortion. If you're at the World Cup, there's gonna be a lot of people screaming and yelling, so you would probably wanna put that on low, okay? And it won't pick up as much noise, but you'll still hear noise. If you have it on normal and you're standing within 30 feet of 200 people who are screaming at the top of your lungs, uh, it may get distorted and you may not be able to hear the sound very well, okay? Uh, max recordable shooting time, uh, one at a time. You can choose five minutes or 25 minutes. And you, it's not uh, variable, uh, okay? It's either five minutes or 25 minutes. Now I can put it on 25 minutes and record for only 10 minutes, but I have to push the button to make it stop. Otherwise it will record for five minutes and then it's gonna stop. So that's a good reason to be watching your little blinking light to see if it is recording, okay? That's pretty important. Otherwise you're using your phone Okay, and when you're using your phone, all right, uh, right now it's recording. Notice I cannot see what I'm recording. That's lame, all right, but it tells you that you're recording. And as long as this thing is connected to your phone and it says it's recording, then you know that it is recording. If for some reason you think it's recording and you don't see this, Time remaining is 418, and you've got 43 seconds of recording time so far. So it counts down and counts up. <clears throat> All right, uh, I'm shooting full size right now. Let me stop recording. Now I can see what I'm about to record. But when you're recording, it's using so many resources, it's not going to push what's recording over to your phone. It's just too many resources. Okay, uh, back to settings for video. Okay, uh, video size. You can choose between full HD, which is your 1920 by 10, uh, 960, uh, which is per camera, okay? Each camera is that, that, and then it's spherical, okay? Or 4K, all right? Now, on full HD, uh, I can't remember exactly. I think a five minute clip is <clears throat> 618 megabytes for a five minute clip at full HD. A 4K five minute clip is going to be like 3.18 gigs or something like that. You'll wanna do some testing before you start and you go out so that you'll know how much space you're going to be using on your phone and for that matter you should always train yourself how to use what you're going to use before you actually go out to an event and actually expect to use this thing okay um all right now i've got it set down all right so and then once you get um you've got cam images right here 
Okay, I've got a uh, 123 megabyte and a 65 megabyte. And then uh, previously I took a video file and it was 2.16 gigabytes, okay? And then this is a picture where it doesn't show any megabytes in size. That means it's a picture. So I'm gonna press and zzz, took it and it moved it. Okay, it didn't copy it, it moved it. So now I can see what I did. There we are recording for you. I'm gonna go back and notice that it doesn't say transferred because, well, I transferred it, right? No, you didn't transfer it. You moved it from here to your device. You didn't transfer it to the app. Okay, that's what transferring is. You transferring it to the app. Okay, um, then on device images, this is where it shows all of <clears throat> everything that's been moved or transferred from the app to your device, your actual device in your photo library. Okay, so uh, then I can click on this and there it is. That's on my actual device now. And I can prove that by going here to photos. Okay, and I'll click there. Now notice in photos, it doesn't give you the spherical look. Okay. But if you upload this to Facebook, it will turn it into a 360. Otherwise, you're having to use a viewer, which would be your Theta app is your viewer to show people. But once you port it to Facebook or YouTube uh, or Twitter, I'm not sure if Twitter has a 360 function, but it'll automatically stitch it together and make it a 360 uh, video or picture. Okay, so <clears throat> now that's pretty much all I can tell you about the usage of this on the fly right now, holding it, okay? Unfortunately, you cannot stream live with this. It's not gonna happen. You have to have a laptop that has the Theta, uh, uh, software on it okay actually you don't even have to have that um, but you typically what I did I use a Mac and a PC and have made it work on both okay uh, you're gonna have to use their little one foot cord which is retarded they only have a one foot cord it plugs in right here in your micro S USB and then it plugs into your laptop it looks for some devices uh, for a little bit and does some drivers options. And then I use uh, OBS software, OBS, open broadcast software is what it's called. And inside there, and it takes a little while to figure it out and it's trial and error, but eventually this thing will connect to it. And then you can push to YouTube <clears throat> or Facebook live in 360 and that's the only way you're ever going to get this thing to um, stream live is hooked up to a laptop PC or Mac with a cord and when you do that when you plug it in and your PC detects it this is going to detect that it's hooked up to a PC and right here in between the Wi-Fi signal and your mode is going to say live, L-I-V-E. And then that will tell you that you're in the mode to be able to stream live. Now, whether your OBS software has picked it up and it's going to port it or not is a whole other situation. Um, I'm trying to teach you for the World Cup. Okay, That's where you're going to really be using this sort of thing. And so, <clears throat> again, just kind of a quick recap. Power button as the top. Press and hold. It shut off. Okay. Power on. Press and hold. It was just on, so it's already ready to go. Your middle button is Wi-Fi. 
okay? If you're not using your phone to monitor what you're getting ready to record or transferring images or anything like that, there's no need to have Wi-Fi on, okay? Uh, and then your mode is the bottom, camera and video, camera and video, all right? It does have a microphone on it. Right here, those three little dots is your microphone. It's not the best microphone, but it functions. Okay, you can pay for that little spatial audio adapter, uh, which is, uh, I think, almost as expensive as the uh, Theta V camera itself. Okay, but this is real important. If you start looking, well, how am I supposed to connect? Remember, this is your password. Okay, and when you go to connect to your Theta, right there is your numbers, 00105949. That's my code. And so that is my password. Your numbers will still be something like theta, whether it's a Y or an, and an L, I don't know. It could be a T and a Z or whatever, but the numbers is your password, okay? So <clears throat> I hope I have helped you in some way. Uh, I know I struggled for a long time on this thing and uh, I still have my, uh, what I consider to be pros and cons with this camera. Um, I had to replace mine within a week, or actually uh, about uh, two weeks. I let it set for a week, went to go use it out in a uh, thunderstorm, trying to record a tornado in 360 degrees, uh, get my video, and come to find out the motherboard on it had crashed. So I had to get it replaced. Then it needed a firmware up update. And then it was like, oh, don't use HDR you know, because they didn't get it right, okay? Uh, so I'm a little sour with them, and hopefully over time, I will be able to uh, make myself feel like it was worth the money. Right now, it is not, because uh, I also lost files, okay? Uh, the thing with this right here, the larger the file, okay? The larger the file, I'm gonna go back to this for a moment here. I wanna show you something. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. And I know this is a long video. I think it will help. Okay, uh, let's see, make sure I'm connected. I am connected. Now I'm gonna to go to my Theta app right here. Go back to this. Go to my cam images, not transferred. Now here's the thing, when you go to transfer or copy and move, whatever method it's gonna be, when you pick one, it's going to give you the alert here. It says, uh, the transfer is expected to take a while, and then it shows you how big the file is, 123 megabytes. Are you sure you want to transfer the data? Do not switch applications during the transfer, or it will not complete, or it could corrupt your file. If transfer with slant top and bottom correction is selected, video tilt corrected before the transfer, which means it's gonna stop and think for a little bit and do its thing real slow, and then finally it'll transfer, okay? This correction takes some time to complete, and I assure you it does take a lot of time to complete. One. Uh, this 123 megabyte file, if I click transfer with slant top bottom correction, uh, I bet it takes seven, eight minutes for just 123 megabyte file. Imagine if it was a three gigabyte file, how long that would take. But if you transfer or copy and move, oops, if you transfer without top bottom correction, which you want to do that if you have a lot of this, okay? If you're on a tripod, there is no correction needing to be made, okay? If you're moving it real slow like this, 
because it kind of has a gimbal in it. When you swing like this, you notice it in your video. But if you correct it before you transfer it, it'll take that away and it'll keep it a stable image. Okay, but if you're just popping it down like this, turning, or you get it on a tripod and it's just sitting there recording the whole time like this, there's no need to correct for it. So if you don't have to correct, transfer without anti or without slant top bottom correction, watch how fast it moves. Look how fast it's transferring that file over. Boop. Little blinking light to see if it is recording. Okay, that's pretty important. Otherwise, you're using your phone Okay. Okay. <laughs> I say okay a lot, don't I? All right. <clears throat> so there you go. But if I had done that with slant correction, we would still be waiting for it to get to 10%. All right. So that's why always, whether you're holding one of these or any kind of camera ever, and you may know this already, steady as she goes and level, slow pans. Don't be moving around like this. You're just gonna make that video look terrible and nobody's gonna wanna see the best video in the world from the World Cup if it looks like this, okay? So anyways, um, reduce that slant correction if you don't have to, okay? Now what you can do to start out is you could do a couple tests. You could make it so that you're not moving the file like I do, you could copy it. And then what you end up doing is you've got the file on there that you could transfer um, with um, slant, slant correction. Because you, you could do two tests, two five minute clips. One five minute clip, just kind of holding it in place. Another five minute clip, holding it in place. And then you'll have two si files that are the same size. Do one with slant correction and one without and see if there's really that big of a difference. And then you get to understand how you want to choose how to transfer or copy your files. Because uh, again, if you're at the World Cup and you're copying the files, it may copy it to your device that so has a lot of memory on it. Make sure it's, you got as much as possible. But you're then gonna have to sit there and go through and delete this file delete that file, delete that file, because now I have it on my phone, okay? And eventually you may brick it, basically, because you don't have any storage left on there, and then you can't get any more recording, and you're still at the World Cup, and there's still another hour and a half to go, okay? Another thing is that you might want to do is get you one of those little uh, mobile chargers, little mobile packs. It's a battery backup that you can plug it in, so that you can power this thing up and charge it every once in a while if there's any kind of intermission or something like that. Uh, same thing with your phone. Make sure it's fully charged, fully charged. Make sure this stays charged. The battery does run down relatively quick and you will even drain this more if you're connecting this with Wi-Fi. So that's another reason why you want to say, okay, well, as long as I know how to use this thing and I can tell Oh, yeah, it's recording. And you're not going to get to see what you're recording in the first place. Okay? Don't put it in Wi-Fi mode. Keep this thing charged up as much as possible. And only when you get to a point where you're saying, Okay, I've, I've recorded for, you know, uh, I had it set for five minutes. It's not the app that sets it by five minutes. You have set this to work as default to work to record for five minutes. It's not just because you had this, all you did is tell this to tell your phone to record for five minutes. And even if you're not connected, it's gonna record for five minutes or it's gonna record for 25 minutes depending on what you told it to set in defaults, okay? So uh, if you record for five minutes, you're gonna see the blinking light turn off and stuff like that and it's gonna go back. And then maybe say you have your, camera to set off uh, to shut off and time out after seven minutes so what that means is you got you turn it on you got one minute 
to start recording, you record for five minutes, and then you <clears throat> shut it off, and you're within the timeout limit. So, and I may be wrong about that. But uh, I hope this has helped you out a lot.